and they were really like getting on my nerves and I snapped. I snapped on stage. I said, who are you? But for those who understand, you may be the most appreciated person because you're the one who's studying it to them as it is. Look, I'm not going to play games with you. I'm not going to show you court. Bam, that's what's up. I have a, a method of dealing with things and, and that one, when it comes to issues like this, is I don't like to delve. You are just living another version of Islam that is agreeable to you, that is pleasing to you. And obviously it is safer. It is definitely safer, more appealing. Everybody claps for you. Hey, what a wonderful guy. Oh, Mr. Nice Guy. Look, everybody loves him. He doesn't say anything bad about anyone. And yeah. all he says all day is take the good and leave the bad. Version of a man that is more like a puppy uh, for his wife or a puppy at home with his family in general, or even a puppy in the society. He's yes. cute and he's taking care of himself and his, I don't know what, and cats and meowing them. And on the contrary, going to Hollywood actually ruined my chances to, uh, to becoming an athlete. Who is Maulana Zingi Bingi in Tagatuku Zigi Zigi? <laughs> So welcome back to the Righteous Rich Podcast, the show that simplifies the art and speech and the work and the true love or the passion that which connects with the creator. And I'm your host, Kazi, and my today's guest is Abu Musab, uh, author, YouTuber, and make sure till you know, and you are going to listen the you know throughout because we are going to discuss so many points and so many uh, secrets and knowledge, the framework. I don't know. I have so many things to ask. I hope I will be able to finish within within uh, you know one hour or so. So uh, let us see how we can go for it. And brother. Musab, thank you so much for joining me for this week's uh, The Righteous Rich Podcast. Zakallah khair. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me, Brother Kazi. So uh, it's my pleasure to be with you and uh, we hope and pray that Allah will make whatever we discuss means of guidance and success and facilitation and um, all the good things for everybody. Yes, I think many of them already know you. So before that, uh, congratulations on your mustaches. <laughs> oh, mashallah what? it's your mustache is mashallah okay. yeah <laughs> because well, we have so seen much. you without mustache and mashallah cute young brother the only young brother mashallah the approach you have uh, made sure that every young brother in the millennials are you know watching your video i am sure that all the millennials must have come across your video and brother musab has more than 5 million views already on his uh, channel the the one, one way to paradise and yes. we will be discussing a lot re related to his journey related to his channel related to the recent issues but Without going into issues, we are really discussing how he really, you know, uh, takes care of the framework he is working, how really he comes out with the articulation of his content, because uh, not everybody can do this. This is, uh, this is a skill also. So, okay, so, uh, brother, since yes, I was talking about uh, uh, the most touches for sure. Any, uh, is it is it is it something which you uh, got hit with the forty? Uh, that's why you got this mustaches. Because We're you just recently the turned forty. The story of the mustache <laughs> is, uh, no, and I don't know how recent. It maybe it's been a few years. What happened was, um, I think I was on one of those summer camps mm. uh, with uh, one of these DAO organizations, and we we were out in the desert or something, and we had no access to to shaving mm. um, and so I, I had to grow my hair which is not my style and then naturally my my mustache grew yeah. and by the time I made it home I was I was eager uh, to shave my head but then I looked at the mustache and I was like mm, it looks all right and I inquired I think I asked my mom for her yeah. opinion and when my mom gave me the two thumbs up I was Close. like that's it it's a mustache from this day onwards Yes. And so I've kept it. It's a little challenging, honestly, because, you know, it gets itchy sometimes. It's you a lot of to work to trim it because you have to make sure that work. it's above the lip and so on and so forth. But, you know, I guess also because I became older, I needed something that matches my age to some degree. 
So it's a number of factors uh, that incorporate into the presence of the mustache. Never thought I would discuss this in this matter, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because time. now it's it, this is something which we share, like what's happening behind the scenes, you know. Now, They know yeah. what's happening. Even people can't keep any mustaches and there is a story behind that also, you know. <laughs> So, yeah. And you are, mashallah, you are a legend now. You are influential, one of the influential brothers. Oh, I don't know about all that. Brothers. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about any of that. But anyways, yeah, we'll skip that part. So, uh, inshallah, we'll have deep discussion because I have a lot. And uh, especially related to the spiritual, uh, you know, turning point which you had. Uh, no. Of course, I want... I mean, uh, the who are watching online now, I will put the links. He already has uh, so much shared on uh, one of uh, the brother's channel, Sajid. And uh, I want, if you want to really know in depth uh, information about his journey from uh, Lebanon to uh, Hollywood, Hollywood to Makkah, Medina, all those stories are covered in his channel. And I, we don't want to repeat the same content again here. Wow. So. Many of the Muslims' uh, influencers, including you, are uh, you know, got amazing turning points in life, and uh, many of them always regret for losing their you know first half, you know the turning point and the first half. They feel like okay, it's a guilty feeling, you know. Some sometimes some people, I mean, most of them are influentials, and they are like always talk about it. I I have uh, lost that half, first half, it's such a loss. Did you ever felt like you, know, you have lost something similar or you had a guilt feeling, you know? I, I look, I'm the type, I'm the type who I have a, a method of dealing with things. And, and that one, when it comes to issues like this is I don't like to delve or overthink right. because I think overthinking is counterproductive. Right. Um, I know a lot of people that overthink certain things, especially those of the past. And because they're in the past and they're not retrievable, they're not changeable, they're not adjustable, I don't see the, the value or the benefit in, as they say in the, uh, Amer the, the English proverb, crying over spilled milk. Yeah. Okay, the milk is already on the ground. I, I, they, there's nothing you could do to, to return it back to the carton um, or to the box or to the container or the bottle. Khalas, just accept it and move on. And so I don't really think I don't sit there and think, okay, the, the first part of my life, was that good for me? Was it bad for me? Do I regret it? Do I appreciate it? I don't, each, I don't even actually have a stance on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe now that you're asking me, I could. I could yeah. think of something and I say, it's a combination. It's a combination of regret because I missed out on certain narrations, the narration of Prophet that seven will be under the shade of Allah on the day where there's no shade of, uh, but his shade. And one of those seven will be a young man who was brought up in the obedience of Allah. That's yeah. something I missed out on. Mm. Um, so if I think about it now, it's something to regret. But then I turn around and say, yet, had I not been through what I have been through, I probably wouldn't know what I know now. And I wouldn't be able to relate to people when I give them da'wah at the level I feel I'm able to relate to, or at least what they tell me based on what they tell me, the feedback I get from the people is that they can connect with me at a certain level because when I address certain topics, I usually do so having been there and not mm -hmm. theoretically speaking about what someone else mentioned or some, some other person's story or some book I read. No, I've, I've been there, probably done worse with, than what you imagine. So that gives you a certain insight. Um, it gives you certain... But some, uh, but some use it as a you know, driving force. You know, uh, it becomes right. a driving force because you have lost 20 years already. So I have to catch up with that, Yanni. I have to catch up that all too. the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, I wasn't even there, but even even if I want to add that idea, that too, ah. um, you know, first, like at first, it's like I can I can use this for da'wah, and, and it was narrated some of the Sahaba, I believe Umar, he said, Islam man lam al He does mm. not know Islam, one who did not know jahiliya. And if you look at the Sahaba, they all came from from uh, yeah. uh, ignorance, from the days of ignorance, be it uh, whether they were involved in shirk or they weren't, still. They were not Muslims and they mm. all came to Islam and they became the finest people. Not that I am any good, but that in and of itself, as according to Ibn Qayyim al jawzi and other scholars, that is beneficial in the sense that you know the detailed aspects of misguidance and yeah. then you learn the detailed aspects of guidance. So you're able to draw certain conclusions and see certain things that someone who has not been there will probably not be able to conclude. Uh, it right. could be a little advantage, but it's something to appreciate. 
And then, as you mentioned, yes, uh, I have a lot of catching up to do and a lot of recovery. Uh, <laughs> If you for, say like that, imagine those who have, you know, come up and they are saying like, Kenny, we, we have to learn a lot. From brother Abu Musaf, he has sh- shook all uh, the Dawa guys and he has uh, given so many people a direction and encouraged. Inshallah, that's that's something which we are going to have discussion, inshallah. So, uh, just like feminism, you know, men have uh, masculinity issues. Uh, you know, be a real man thing. And usually, uh, aggressiveness is kind of mask. Uh, to show uh, the fake masculinity in uh, today's day so before right. getting into masculinity issues i think uh, we have to discuss the approach yeah, we have seen you as you know but let us talk about your approach which is uh, uh, similar to ahmed hidad when it comes to zawa he was very aggressive very hardcore and everyone remembers how he was bashing everyone and so yeah. and even he had many copies of him who followed his approach and uh, there were uh, good result coming out and also uh, there were some effects which were you know it's we can still see you know uh, so how about you any what, what was your approach and do you think that approach was good enough and do, do you still uh, work on that the same approach i don't i don't, that's a good question brother i only cause i mean thinking about it I, I don't think I ever wanted to copy anyone, yes. uh, but I was sure influenced by whoever I was listening to, especially in my early Islam. So when I first started uh, practicing Islam or learning Islam, whoever I was exposed to uh, had some sort of impact uh, on me and on, on my behavior, on my style. Um, yeah. I think more than Ahmadi, that, uh, rahimahullah, uh, I would say from the Arab world, because I'm an Arab, I used to listen to certain mashayikh. I don't want to mention their name because they were controversial in a sense that now that I've learned Islam, I realize that they had a, a number of serious errors in terms of aqidah. But back then, uh, that certain shuyukh, and one in particular, was known for being like a, a major, uh, they, they call him the lion of the pulpit, the lion of the mimbar. Mm. When he gave the khutbah sermon, man, you knew for sure that you will not be able to fall asleep, you will not be bored, not even, mm. it's impossible. Mm. Um, and that had a huge impact because the first khutbah I ever gave, I think I delivered it with that same kind of drive and passion. And that kind of became the standard for me that I don't use note cards. I don't like to refer to uh, papers. I want to engage the audience. I want to have eye contact with them. I want to be able to speak to them. And, yeah. and I wanted to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who used to be very uh, uh, angry on, on, during his khutbah. He would get mm. angry, his mm. eyes would become red, and he would raise his voice. And this, the Sahaba mm. described him as though he is a general in the army, warning mm. his soldiers mm. from being attacked in the morning and the evening. That's, mm. a, that's a serious stance. Mm. I think that shaped the way I approach things. Definitely yeah. Ahmad Didat, rahimahullah. Uh, and Ahmadida's approach is cutthroat. Um, he's 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 a, a butcher, and when you when you butcher your opponent, no doubt that certain soft-hearted uh, people or or weak-hearted people will be traumatized by the butchering. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's the downside of being aggressive, especially in the early days when my early my first lectures, and some of the lectures which I'm glad they were not even recorded. I remember clearly I was giving a lecture in a hospital, speaking of secrets, and uh, it was Ramadan. There were a bunch of non-Muslims, a lot of Christians from among the Filipino community. Mm. And then uh, they started bombarding me with these very annoying questions. Uh, how come you Muslims in Ramadan, because they were nurses, how come we have all these people in the ER because of overeating, even though Ramadan is a month of fasting? And why do you guys become so angry in Ramadan when it's supposed to be the month of patience? And they were really like getting on my nerves. And I snapped. I snapped on stage. I said, who are you cross worshiper? Who are you to speak? Instead of worrying about us Muslims and our faults, go look at you worshiping a false God. This bad Muslim will eventually end up in paradise and you will eventually end up in hell. I mean, I went savage on them. Even the Muslim audience were like, whoa and when it was all said and done i was like i went to the you know the, the those who are older than me the muslims i said did i do bad they were like dude don't even ask i mean like we don't even know what to say 
And I was like, okay, that's not exactly the wisest thing to do. Uh, but I guess I was influenced by that uh, approach and it doesn't always work. So in fairness, I have to highlight that while Ahmed Didad uh, had a very great impact on people, yeah. it was also a reason for many people not to want to know about Islam because their emotional uh, pain was unbearable mm. for them. They, they, yes. they couldn't remove that, that barrier of emotional pain to mm. understand and, and uh, have logic, any logic or to rationalize what is being said. So I would say uh, Ahmad Dida toned down a little bit, uh, you know, more, more subtle, more courteous, more understanding, more patient. You, and this is something that you develop with years. It's uh, years of experience and yeah. trial and error and improvement, guidance from Allah working on your mistakes, working on your shortcomings, you will eventually be able to fine-tune each, according to his style, what is most appropriate. Um, mm. And, you know, we're still, we're, it's still work in progress, brother. It never ends. Uh, until what now, if tomorrow still... you realize that uh, you should have taken a different approach? Maybe software one. Would, would you regret your earlier stance for that? I don't, I don't really, I don't think it was a moment of realization. It was just a gradual process of growing up. Mm. Or maybe seeing, seeing the... the the results of or the damages that those approaches had because at the end of the day you want uh, to guide the people right. and if you're putting out material that guides a few and mm. misguides many or upsets many yeah. or um it doesn't serve the purpose then it, de right. it defeats the objective that you're you started with you understand and so i i used to have certain lectures where even though what i'm saying is true it, it wasn't it wasn't received so well except by those who were already receptive, people that were already in standby mode, they're all ears, their hearts are open, they want the truth, even if someone who's going to shove it down their throats, they wanted it. Those are the easy people. The difficult people are the ones that you need to break into. They're not going to be broken into with this kind of approach. So right. I guess when I saw that the results were not as effective, because you feel like, yo, I'm sharing an ayah from the book of Allah, this is not negotiable. Yes. I'm sharing a hadith from Sallallahu Alaihi which is not negotiable. I mean, compromise. we're not here yeah. to discuss whether what I'm saying is valid or invalid because I'm not even talking about issues of difference of opinion. I'm talking about the black and white stuff in Islam. Yes. And still people are not receiving it well, meaning the issue could be in, in the delivery. It could be in the approach. It could be in the aggressiveness. And so you learn from those and you try yes. to improve and then you still make mistakes every now and then. And someone more senior to you will come and say, hey, you need to slow your roll and calm down a little bit. You're going too too far, and then you're like, okay, zakallah khair, I'll I'll chill a little bit, uh, for a little bit. So uh, it's it's like that. Mm. Because uh, the chances are that uh, you know when you're uh, let's say Ahmad Idad has create created his uh, own copies, you can say so many. Today also we can see them. I still have, and there are brothers in Bahrain also. We can still see the same style and same, you know, memory, uh, the same approach, everything similar we can find. Maybe they can you would try, have got, yeah, Kazi. you know, think, brother Abu Musa also. That is is replicable. I yeah, don't think. Of course. Uh, I honestly, I don't. I, and they would have been. They would have been known. They can try, but to have that combination and that yeah, charisma. Of course. Charisma, that, you cannot. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean. But the, the approach, the approach, the people use the approach. Like you, um, I'm, I'm like, honey. What if uh, uh, the aggressive approach of uh, brother Abu Musab might have taken in a wrong way, and people might have used and and created their own groups? What if that happens, yani? You know. So <laughs> sometimes it's. Uh, I, 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 we cannot say anything. <laughs> Nobody knows, man. Yeah, I mean, you, you, yes. as long as you're living, no one knows. When, when one dies, I guess one will realize what, what uh, legacy, if any, they will leave behind, what impact they will have on people, or they will be like, man, I'm glad this guy died. You know, Allah <laughs> alam, what, Allah alam, what would happen. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, very serious question, Sheikh. Yes, brother. Not Maulana, who is Maulana Zingi Bingi in Takatuku Zigi Zigi? <laughs> this is one of the videos I saw. I like in this video, I'm just laughing on this stuff. Well, I'm surprised that you've even memorized the name because I can't even repeat it. <laughs> um, uh, those are, I guess, this is uh, the, the, the mixture of my culture uh, and being an Arab who lived in the West, uh, who moved back to the Gulf region, who's mixed with every nationality that you can think of. In my entire life, 
I feel like I've always been a, a, a humans person. I've, mm. I've always loved humans in general. Yeah. I don't I'm have sure any, have. any uh, discrimination uh, against anyone. I make a lot of jokes against certain nationalities. That's, that's one, of, one of the reasons yeah. people watch you, man. <laughs> yeah, but, but in reality, I'm, I'm all good with everybody. Yes. So those things are a product of everything I've done in the past. And they come out... Such a frequent uh, things come out. Spontaneously, and I, don't, I can't even repeat them. I, in fact, remember the story of the Zabua Mabua? It was the name I came up with, and a brother Zabua. actually made a channel name after. And then when I read it one of the times, I was like, hey, this name, this th name Somewhere. sounds like something I would come up with. He was like, you did. <laughs> you made that name. So it's, um, it's comedy. It's, fun, yeah. it's halal comedy, but halal yeah, comedy, I don't know yeah. who that sheikh is. It's a man-made sheikh. It's, a, it's an invented actually, sheikh. Actually, I mean. it's one of the uh, serious uh, content which you shared about eschatology. We'll not get, in, get into it, but I felt like the criteria which you chose from that video uh, was like uh, one should have the knowledge, the one should have the Arabic knowledge, and one should uh, you know know the science behind it. Yani. You just don't uh, connect from here and there, and it was good. But still, brother, I, mean, I have seen uh, one of the brother who is. Uh, Again, the copy of you can say that many, many they relate whenever they call, uh, talk about eschatology. The first one is we related to that the old brother from uh, right. Pakistan. So, so uh, without mentioning his name, uh, but when you said these criteria, I was shocked. Like, is is it really the important criteria which you chose? Knowing Arabic and knowing knowledge, having knowledge and uh, having the knowledge of the science which they are using, the comprehension methods they are using. I was like, I, I don't think, because uh, if that is the case, I have a brother who can really uh, uh, come up and say that, okay, if that is the criteria, I know the Arabic, I know I have the knowledge, I have uh, the science uh, background for the eschatology also. They have spent like 10 years on just to connect and see all the information available online and passively and uh, come up and say tomorrow that like, uh, it doesn't match with the refutation which brother Abu Musab has done. Uh, uh, without, uh, without going to that much uh, uh, deep into it, uh, I was like, what might be your criteria or what might be your framework usually which you use? I don't think this was the framework. It might be a basic one you gave. You out. missed an element though, because uh, you mentioned Maybe I have missed. Yeah, I think, you yes, missed one, the, like the most crucial element, which is the understanding of the Sahaba and the righteous predecessors. And that's yeah. the defining point. Because yeah. yes, we can, uh, technically, uh, someone can know the Arabic language and can study uh, p politics and, uh, yeah. and geopolitics and can study eschatology and, and, and the list goes on. Uh, but if you're towing a, a path that is not in line with the understanding of the early generations, then you have... You will, you will not be able, you will not be able to bring about guidance superior to theirs. That's just the plain reality that is highlighted in the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which warned us about uh, sectarianism, about denominations, about dividing into different uh, groups, and about the fact that all these groups will, have, uh, will be eligible to enter the fire with the exception of one that will follow the understanding of Islam as the Prophet Sallallahu understood it and his companions. And that's it. So it's, it's really the most important element, not only in the matter of eschatology, but in every subject every matter matters. of Islam. Yes. Similarly, so, if we were to think about any worldly matter, let's mm. say uh, medicine, somebody wants to be involved in medicine. Um, just reading the books of medicine or knowing, let's say the medicine books were written originally in Latin. Right. S studying Latin and then reading those medical books and doing your homework will not make you a doctor. Right. right? You will have to learn from someone. Someone has to give you the authority. Someone has to give you the license to practice medicine. Right. And I would say similarly, the Sahaba, with that analogy, are the ones who give you the license, a person a license to be able to propagate the message of Islam. Because right. having those tools without that approval from them and that approval, i.e. what they taught, what they understood, then you are following a path other than theirs. And Allah says in the Quran, 
ومن يشقق الرسول من بعد ما تبين له الهدى ويتبع غير سبيل المؤمنين نوليه ما تولى ونصله جهنم وساءت مصيره whoever opposes the messenger after the truth has become clear to him and follows the path other than that of the believers we will allow him to take the path he has chosen and we will admit him to the hellfire and what a terrible abode so who were the believers when this ayah was revealed they were the companions of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah warned us about uh, going against their way of practicing islam they were the believers their belief was the sound belief their comprehension was the sound comprehension their implementation was the sound implementation and that's what we strive to follow so right. now we look from that lens from that lens now we could judge anybody whether the mm. fellow you mentioned that older brother or anybody else we're going to put it under the same lens if it is in line with what they said then it's subject to uh, uh, scrutiny it's subject to analysis the scholars can look into it say okay that looks like it's a valid interpretation it's not that it's not like nobody will ever uh, you know understand or learn something new afterwards that's not what we're promoting that's not what we're saying whether yeah. the khair will be in this ummah until yawm al qiyamah there will be goodness in this ummah but that understanding is based on the foundations that were placed by the sahaba so you may come about with an understanding that is in line with the Sahaba. So when we came to the issue of eschatology, Qazi, the, mm. the point of distinction or the point of contention was, yeah. did the Sahaba look at text apparent as per the apparent meaning or did they believe in subliminal uh, meanings and hidden meanings? And mm. you will know if you read anything from the seerah or mm. any hadith that the Sahaba took everything face value. Mm. Therefore, mm. that is the lens of the Sahaba now. You Makes have sense. to use that lens to understand all the ayat in the Quran and all the right. ahadith of the because that's how they looked at them. They did not say, oh, this means that and this means that. And every time they come across something, they say, oh, that's not what it means. It means something else. That's just that you will leave nothing left of, the, of knowledge in Islam because it's open to anybody now thinking, yes. oh, well, you know, uh, the Dajjal is this uh, alarm I, I have at home. Because every time, <laughs> uh, you know, every time it's Salah time, this alarm goes off. And it distracts me in the salah. This is the Dajjal. The Prophet <laughs> said the Dajjal will do it. Who's going to tell him no? He's going to tell you this Dajjal is, is, is evil. It's an yeah. evil in my house. Yes. Then you cannot never close the door. So, so the Sahaba understood yani, that the so Dajjal was strictly a, a, a creature of Allah. A creature of Allah. And they thought certain individuals were the Dajjal. Khalas, they've laid the foundation for you to understand who the Dajjal is. You mm, cannot come mm, afterwards mm. and say, yeah, well, well, I can, but I think, however, let me analyze this. Let me, uh, and, you know, come up with this and come up with that. No, no. The foundation is, is different and you won't succeed like that. Right. Very important. If anybody is watching, uh, got the idea must be like, yani, how you need to have the framework. Just like all the Dawah man, Dawah people know, go rap framework. There is framework for this refutation also. You get it? This is the only channel we got this reputation, criteria, and framework revealed, which is very simple. But of course, requires uh, certain knowledge to do it. So, uh, <clears throat> I think I, I missed out on uh, masculinity. What, what are your oh, yeah. views on masculinity? Uh, it's something very, you know, serious. Because one of the recent event, I think, because of that, you you really you know gave uh, an, a, a tough message also that oh, because i know i'm sure uh, why you came up with that it is out of love for people uh, majority of them suffering something major things are important we have to follow and uh, prioritize on those things instead of uh, working on something which is not important so uh, the message uh, came out like as a, and a being a man any so masculinity is something which we uh, talk and you i have seen you talking about it so uh, what's your views on masculinity in islam you know being a My, being a man in islam yeah. hey the, the man in islam is what allah defined him to be right. um, and what the and what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam exemplified in his uh, life and what umar uh, did uh, you know in his daily routines and what abu bakr I mean, if you look at any one of the Sahaba, you will be astonished at the level of masculinity and manhood that they displayed on regular basis. It is actually out of this world. I don't think you can compare any man on earth in modern day or even from, from the ancestors, people before Islam. Nobody can be compared to the level of courage, uh, manhood, and, and, and masculinity that the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba displayed. 
Um, look at uh, before that when Allah says in the Quran, "Al-rijalu wa mun'aatun." are the ones in charge of women when Allah explicitly says and that the men have a daraja they have a degree over women and when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that the woman should obey her husband and that if she prays her five daily prayers and she fasts her month of Ramadan and she you know does the obligation and she obeys her husband she will enter Jannah from whichever gate she wants. Among the major pillars of Islam that she's expected to do right after those or right along with those is the obedience to the husband. Mm -hmm. So when this is such, such a straightforward, explicit uh, framework for how you're supposed to conduct yourself, why and how are we allowing anybody to convert and alter and twist those foundations and put forward a feminine, um, weak, soft version of a man that is more like a puppy uh, for his wife or a puppy at home with his family in general or even a puppy in the society. He's yes. cute and he's taking care of himself and his, I don't know what, and cats and meowing them and I don't want to give more examples so that we don't wind up, you know, uh, uh, inappropriate raging. empowerment of feminism, basically. Yeah, I right. mean, I mean, and a, a brother who's afraid of his wife and who obeys his wife and she she has a similar authority as his in the, in the family. La, la, yani how, how? So I'm very, I'm very um, outspoken about the fact that we need to accept the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sisters, the women in Islam have to accept the role that Allah gave them and we have to accept the role Allah gave us. And Allah told us that we should not desire to have the other role. It's explicit in the Quran that Allah gave to each a role and you shouldn't want what the others have. That's why it's prohibited in Islam for a man to resemble a woman or for a woman to resemble a man. That's why homosexuality is looked at uh, as a, a grave sin in Islam because all of these are actual violations of those principles that were laid in Islam. Whether a woman is trying to behave like a man or vice versa, it's a violation of the roles that were designated for each. Uh, homosexuality, whether among males or among females, is again, it's an abomination against those principles that were laid. And so I, as an orthodox uh, preacher of Islam, and, and of course Islam is not Christianity, orthodox here as a, as a linguistic uh, yes. term means the original, the authentic, the sound, the unchanged. It doesn't mean orthodox as you would think otherwise. I, as a propagator of this uh, version of Islam, which is the only valid version, and I don't have to shy away or apologize for saying that it is the only valid version, I have no choice but to make sure that I remind myself and the fellow humans that this is what it is and either we are brave enough to embrace and follow or that the second situation and option plan B is to say I am weak I'm working on myself I'm trying to get there what we don't want to do is say oh no I got a problem with this or I reject this or I object to this or I don't like this this is not where we're playing with fire if you're able to embrace, Jazakallah khair, Allah bless you, bravo, more power to you, keep it moving. If you're falling short like all of us, we still have a long way to go. Alhamdulillah, you're on the right track. You're on the right track, keep moving until you arrive. But don't you dare now go against the traffic and start causing havoc and start complaining and then wonder why you're going to crash and die. You've chosen to make a U-turn on the freeway and go against the traffic. You go against the Quran. You go against the Quran and the Sunnah, and the understanding of the early generations. You're about to crash and destroy yourself and destroy others. And so, masculinity or or the anti-feminism, all of these are based on the pure teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah, who were legislated by the Creator of mankind, who obviously knows us, knows us better than anyone else. And therefore, he gave us the manual for success. If you think that there's a better manual elsewhere, then we need to teach you Islam from scratch. Mm. And you need to realize that you've been exposed to uh, maybe uh, faulty individuals who might have great intentions, but misunderstandings. 
Great intentions, but misapplication. Great yeah. intentions, but misinformation. Bottom line is we have become victims. And don't mm -hmm. wonder and don't be shocked. Don't be surprised because all of that has also been prophesied. Meaning mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. those subjects, even those realities, we have already been told by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that they will eventually happen to this ummah. So even that part is not surprising. Even that part is like, oh, how could this happen? Well, you were told that this is going to happen. What are you going to do about it? How ready are you? How prepared are you? So, I mean, to me, those things are non-negotiable matters. And when you open the door for negotiation, you will mislead the masses and Allah will hold us accountable on the day of judgment for being propagators of fitna and propagators of confusion by allowing the foundations and the principles he, lay, he laid down to be subjects of uh, scrutiny and analysis and input and opinions. Yes, there's an area within Islam that is totally for that. Alhamdulillah, from the mercy of Allah, there's an area for exerting yourself and looking into matters and having various opinions and it's all healthy and it's all good. And there's an area which Allah Azza wa Jal made entirely clear as in Surah Al-Imran. Hunna uh, Ummul Kitab. Ayatul Muhkamat Hunna Ummul Kitab. Ayat Darak. Entirely clear. They are the mother of the book. Those, we cannot mess around with them. So now when we look at masculinity, does it fall under the Ayat Al-Muhkamat or Ukharu Mutashabihat or others that are ambiguous? Go through the Quran and the Sunnah. Go look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ, a man who had uh, uh, exemplified the, the most bravery a man can have, strength, Anyone he wrestled, he beat, alayhi salatu salam. When the people would be scared, he would be the one who would go out and see who the, who the possible enemy may be. Even though his life is the most valuable, he should be protected. He should have bodyguards around. The Sahaba would hide behind him during warfare. They would hide behind the Prophet sallam, who would take the lead and march on uh, against the people. Uh, he had so many wives. And, you know, anyone, anyone who's had one wife, can understand what responsibility it takes for you to manage one wife, let alone two, let alone three, let alone four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He died, Ali he had nine wives under his care who were properly managed, who were disciplined when they went out of line. They went out of line. He, he abandoned them, did not even talk to them until there was, there was a, 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 a calamity for them. And Allah Azza wa Jal revealed ayat and support. If you want the worldly life, go. Then he will release you. And if you want Allah and his messenger, then you need to, you know, you need to act accordingly. And of course, they made the choice because they're the mothers of the believers. And they chose the Prophet ﷺ. So he, he exemplified the ability to manage a, a family, to manage a society, to manage a community, to manage a state uh, on, on so many levels. Where? In the Arabian Peninsula? without any education, being uh, unlettered, never been to college, never been to university, never been to formal education. How in the world? Like, how in the world do you do that? Like today, if you don't even, if you don't know how to use an Excel sheet, you can't even get a job. How do you manage a state with absolutely no qualifications in terms of what the people consider to be qualifications? That's because he's the ultimate man. So then you come and now you try to change the beauty and the authority right. of that man into something that completely goes against the the way he conducted himself it definitely will have a huge impact on the poor teenagers who are already confused in this world we're living yes. in where gender confusion and gender for whatever they call Too them and <laughs> we don't even know you know in the olympics a dude uh, participates as a male one year, it doesn't work out. He comes back the next year as a female. And now he's, he's competing with the females. Ishada, what, how, what are you talking about? I mean, we're living in crazy days, crazy yes. times. And so, yes. you know, it's more pressure on us to uh, promote uh, masculinity in the ultimate sense, uh, hoping and praying that, you know, men will become men as they ought to be. And then uh, women will follow suit and life will be lovely. You think uh, this is... Uh we have lost the trust in uh, as a muslim community or uh, the self respect the identity or because we are pleasing people and uh, compromising on our creed and our our 
our knowledge of islam also yani i think that's that's the reason i you what do you think yani for sure brother kazi this is one of the biggest uh, calamities that had befallen us is our our keenness on impressing the the western world and yes. the non muslims in general we are we i mean it's one thing that you want to impress them in the worldly matters okay i'm not going to i'm not going to hate that's i actually do i want to compete with them in the worldly matters because i want to show them that i could be a practicing muslim and dominate i could be a crack, practicing muslim and uh, and be in a state of leadership in fact i want to be in the position of leadership because i want to decide what happens i don't want someone else to decide and impose on me if mm-hmm. i call the shots then i can at least adhere to the guidelines of allah and i could you know say hey i don't want to do this cuz this is not right or don't do this cuz it's not right cuz i'm the shot caller when you're not in that position you are basically vulnerable to being told what to do what not to do and that's the byproduct of not reaching the highest level uh, or potential that you have but that's a, that's a side matter the real issue is in trying to impress the non muslims eh, with our religion not by promoting its sound version rather by watering down and adjusting and modifying and modernizing the aspects of islam to make it more appealing to make it more uh acceptable yeah. to the uh, to the west and in the process we lose two things first we lose their respect because they know better they know better why because they've seen people like ahmed dida yes. they've seen people who will not back down who will not shy away who will not twist who will tell it as it is whether you like it or not they know those people exist so when they see those soft weak versions of muslims trying to you know change and and uh, please them they can spot that right away and then it's an automatic turn off from even accepting islam second of all they're harming the muslims and they're harming themselves by uh, failing in doing the job that was designated and given to them hmm. so you've lost the respect of the non muslim and then on top of that you've now confused the poor innocent muslims who are following your lead in this regard and what is the end result no successful dawa and no successful no success for us and mass confusion among the muslim communities because the the examples that they follow the people that they follow who are supposed to set the example and be leaders in the community they themselves are uh, falling short in fulfilling that uh, reality of islam and it it's it's a it's an issue that we have we ask allah to forgive us all of us we have our share of that shortcoming maybe uh, some more than others obviously but still it is a common phenomena among the muslims and people in the state of leadership who shy away from keeping the the sound version of islam communicated i am better off telling the non muslim what allah azza wa jal revealed or what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught and walk away even if he never embraces islam i never have to worry about the consequences when i meet allah if allah ask me i will say oh allah i conveyed what you had revealed i am always in a better condition in that state than the one who actually changes the deen to appease them and to please them and to make it more acceptable to them and then at the end if they embrace islam and they reject it later on when they learn the truth or they never embrace islam because they know that you're just a clown who's bluffing them all along and then allah will ask you who gave you the authority to modify and change if allah revealed penal codes and he said this is the hudud if you do this crime this is the uh, uh, cr- this is the uh, punishment who are we to say well can we look into this a little bit more i mean it, it is a little bar- barbaric after all I mean yes in this day and time that doesn't really sound very uh, uh, humane to do this whoa 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 yeah la la you cannot those those are uh, those are divine uh, uh, revelations uh, divine guidelines from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have to accept face value and we have to communicate to the non-muslims if they embrace islam it's for their own good if they don't Allah will judge them on yawm al-qiyamah and you'll be off the hook 
right so like any now talking and preaching has become so easy any anybody you see on youtube is like uh, in fact i feel like it's misusing the religion uh, to get what they want and grow even uh, in real life also we see in middle east also they grow beard and uh, just to make money and they are, they are open about it i go grow beard and build that trust so it's like any um, islam uh, has become like any some tool to you know get things done in dunya yeah such a bad situation i mean hey that's been that's been the case yeah khazi from 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 way back I don't think that I don't think that's a modern thing maybe it's it's getting uh, uh, getting to extreme levels mm. now but the hypocrites at the time of the prophet sallam they used the same uh, methodology you know the when they meet they believe those who believe qalu amanna wa idha khalaw ila shayatinihim qalu inna ma'akum inna ma nahnu mustahzi'un when they were the shayatin say oh, we're with you we're just mocking these guys and having fun with them so this always been the way of of the hypocrites um to capitalize and utilize mm, mm, mm. Uh, islam uh, whether it is from a financial point of view from a authority point of view from the dominance of the religion whatever serves their uh, greed uh, they will use that and utilize it for their advantage using islam as a slogan or as a as a facet or as a cover as a front uh, yes. for those ill intentions that they have and you know Hey it's it's it is the way it is uh, humans will be divided into three categories on yawm al-qiyamah believers disbelievers and hypocrites and each will have their share and so you know we we need to uh, resist uh, by not by exposing i would say because it's a it's a very technical thing to say that this person is a hypocrite you know understand what i'm saying because right. you're you don't have access to certain people's hearts and they might be misinformed they might be confused it's a little tricky uh, to go there but what we need to do is uh, whether they are hypocrites or simply uh, confused misguided muslims it is our job uh, to highlight the truth uh, to the people so that the the truth is conveyed what happens afterwards is beyond beyond our scope and beyond our responsibility actually mm. so coming back to uh, youtubers now you know that's where we see most of discussion is happening about religion you know i consider myself uh, very very naive and i don't have i have basic knowledge and i'm living with that i'm still learning surface and surface level alhamdulillah so i'm getting chance to sit with a few knowledgeable like you one of them uh, where i can <laughs> see and learn and also of course i have to verify also i will just not blindly go for it but unfortunately online what happens people are definitely you know they're absorbing the information and i know one fact for and uh, thing is that mind is something it's like a, you know kind of capturing memory and absorbing and it's, it's yes sponge it saves yes. somewhere in the corner and you don't even know get to know that you you know this somewhere some information you got it and you are going to use it in your life so i'm i'm also careful uh, when it comes to sharing the content i tell you should verify still even if he is highly knowledgeable even me if i i have shared i might be doing mistakes also so what about this now on, online you also helped any promoted the idea that these knowledgeable people who have got big huge numbers and followers uh, they should teach uh, aqidah al wasatiya and uh, uh, something which is fundamental these people uh, have to take more time for these things so i was like any i don't think they online they can do it they should come and share and make it like an academy and uh, at least promote that whatever they're doing at least they can direct the whole audience to that area because i think like you recently you have uh, pointed out someone uh, like nas daily also yeah nas daily guy uh, all of a sudden from 40 million came down to 20 million by the way <laughs> i heard that he lost uh, <laughs> like a few hundred thousand uh, philippines thousand million millions it, it went down 20 million <laughs> yes Allah. so you even trump lost his account on twitter 
so you have no guarantee that whatever those who are really can you know, i living the celebrity status on online youtube any time you can lose it trust me ah. you any time don't don't be so much uh, you know showing off and arrogant or anything tomorrow you and me this channel can close any time i don't i have no idea like it's going to ah. remain or not be sure I and mean, nothing is permanent and Allah. with that with the I, I idea i think people should if you are really really concerned create some online courses yani like brother you have uh, d- done a great job by writing a book and uh, something which is really productive will stay for Zakala longer khaya. i think you you should share something about that i would like to hear from you with that perspective and yes, a yes. message for everyone that if you are really serious come out something very productive just don't talk on me Yeah obviously it's the easiest thing in the world right now is buying a microphone and headphones yes. and I'm not making fun of me and you <laughs> but in reality yeah I mean you have yes. a mic and a computer and there you are you, you are can use YouTube. phone convert it into camera and yeah ala tool and then yes. you know you got you got mashallah every every tom dick and harry abdullah rabi and mustafa um <laughs> you know uh, dropping uh, dropping gold and jewels as they say uh from from you don't know even from where they don't even know from where right it's like you google something and then you come and speak about it um and i'm not against using google for research but i'm saying you got to have the foundations and then you can do research based on the foundations um but you know the book i wrote i i mean wallahi the book uh, the the credit goes to my family uh, i have to i have to credit my family who pushed the idea of the book and uh, inshallah ta'ala there should be more books in the pipeline hmm. now that we spoke about it uh, we also have the website i know even if youtube goes away the videos go away we still have a good uh, alhamdulillah uh, library or database of hmm. audio uh, classes whether aqida or tafsir uh, or other books which were covered in the past uh, yani those should be accessible some of them are on dvds so even if people are still living in the old age of an actual dvd disc um even those we we have um in an effort yani to try to keep something for sabaq uh, jariya uh, or ilm right. yuntafa bih uh, among the things that you will benefit from after you die is knowledge which the people benefit from and so you know we we pray and we hope that allah azza wa jalla will put baraka and acceptance uh, to to some of the content or to the content in general um right. that it it will help us out on the day where we need it the most uh or during our uh, you know duration in the grave uh when the good deeds will be the only currency that will save you after allah azza wa jalla that will be a source of success uh the dua of the people that you've benefited um that's very important uh, righteous children that you leave behind i mean that's all you got that all right. the money is going to go away the cars are going to go away everything else is going to go away perfect. but those will remain for you when you need them the most right. and therefore Uh, one should really examine what one is putting out uh, to the right. public uh, that's why i've been a little critical of certain uh, people in dawa uh, who i would say are junior uh, they could be a senior in age junior in um in 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 their uh, in the content mm. uh, that all they care about is is a, a content that doesn't really uh, doesn't really convert uh, people Uh, to islam not from a religion to religion it doesn't convert them if in terms of knowledge um you know a christian can give you an admonishment brother you know right. uh, if you give a christian a microphone if you listen to uh, jimmy swagger one of those people that uh, ahmadi that butchered uh, and and slaughtered him for eid multiple times if you listen to him the dude is an excellent motivational speaker hmm. and if you don't have any aqida you'll be mesmerized by the yeah. way he would speak and the way he made it sound like jesus loves you and i mean look the, the idea of being able to admonish people is a wonderful thing but that only goes so far um, you, we as uh, people who have uh, been given the chance to learn or uh, learned in the past or continue to learn we have an obligation actually to benefit the umma in a greater manner than mm. merely mm. Uh, random talks and random reminders which are good uh, salt and pepper they're good spices they're good add-ons you know they're like a a combo you buy a combo there's the main course or if you're eating a meal there's a main course there's an appetizer there's a dessert those are nice appetizers they may be good dessert but where's the main course 
you cannot have the main course as uh, what people have as an appetizer. You could, you could, no doubt, but you're, be, you're missing out and you're actually doing a disservice to the Muslims. Unless you're ignorant, you say, la 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 brother, I am not qualified. I am not qualified. I don't have the ability to give the people the main course. We say then, don't offer any food, close any restaurant. Right. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be uh, advertising, hey, anybody wants a, a, a dinner here? Come. And then when they come, sorry, I only got soup as an appetizer. Okay, I want the full course. No, I'm sorry, I don't have, I don't have enough. Um, and so people shouldn't put themselves out there um, if they don't have the full package, to be honest. Uh, either step aside, because the harm you will create is greater than the benefit. We're not denying the presence of the benefit, but the harm would be greater. And, you know, you, you, you lose your voice repeating the 100%. same message and articulating it in different ways. But, you know, it, not, not everybody's going to agree. It looks like there is no context. It, uh, it looks like they don't have any context. See? They don't have any purpose for just sharing. I don't understand. Because even if I am, uh, I have done uh, content online, released products, online products. We have seen, we have uh, like a proper marketing funnel for that. I think the basic information, anybody can understand this. Uh, I would use social media as a channel to get the attention only. So here. Not, not to really make uh, monetization work there. I don't think uh, that can be possible. And it's like, uh, uh, and I have no guarantee that it will stay. Because if you are really talking the truth, the knowledge which you are going to share, if something which you are sharing very sacred and uh, you think it will be an uh, accepted in the country which you live some of the content of some of the brothers we cannot see it in bahrain also so uh -huh. it it can happen so one should have uh, the proper funnel i think uh, like you said the proper course at the end you take yeah. anywhere but get that course i i like the idea when you promoted this that when you said one should really come to the fundamentals, teach those things because they are much qualified, look qualified, not like we, I, I wear cap and a t-shirt here. They look what? qualified. Nothing wrong with wearing a cap and a t-shirt, brother. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't like that stereotype because, um, the, the, okay, the people of knowledge are at levels. And, yes. and when you're a sheikh, uh, then you have a certain demeanor and a certain dress code that is, is imposed on you culturally. Yes. Um, but that, again, it depends on the culture. Um, yes. If we're we are in the English-speaking world and we're communicating uh, primarily with English-speaking people, exactly. I think there's a little bit more leeway. That's one of the things that I've come to learn uh, through my experience. Yeah. Uh, if I wanted to connect with my audience, at a, I remember the first time I, I, I was given lectures, I was wearing even oh. the shemag and the igal. The igal is yeah, that yeah. little, you know, the round thing. And, and the brother from Medina University, who's, who's uh, American, and who was the one who plugged me on Islam, uh, he told oh, me, Michelle. why are you wearing this? Like, <laughs> why, first of all, this is not your culture. Not your culture. Not, yeah. not your country. Second of all, you're actually limiting yourself. Yes. Because some people will profile you, oh, mm -hmm. that you're of that denomination or that group of people, and you will, you will miss out on, on being able to reach out to the other audience. Right. I was naive and immature, and I dismissed his, his uh, comments and his opinion, and I continued in that way, uh, only to learn after I've grown and, and you know, learned uh, with experience that he actually was right all along. Mm. Um, and mm. that cer at certain times, my dress code, uh, uh, because I don't want to, to think that there's a bridge, uh, or no. not a bridge, a wall between us. Um, that I'm on one side of the world and they're on the other side and I'm just speaking out of my, you know, my mouth without any understanding or connection with what they're going through, right? And so I'm, I don't have an issue with hats, t-shirts, yeah, yeah. uh, tank tops, uh, or I could wear thawb and, and, and uh, you know, what they call it, uh, it's all good. It's all, uh, what, what, once it is within... External doesn't matter. As long as your uh, internet hey, is fixed. Hey, once it's within the guidelines of Islam, yeah. Alhamdulillah, knock yourself out. Whatever does the job. Alhamdulillah. I, mean, I think uh, most of the new brothers uh, who are into Dawa, I think they are modern, stylish. and But make sure that their uh, the basics are clear. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can be all as stylish as you want, but, but yeah. don't change it. Don't try to style Islam. Internal. Internal has yeah. to be clear. Yeah. MashaAllah, uh, since we uh, talked about 
the external appearance mashallah recently i have seen before i conclude with the rapid fire questions to you i, I hope everyone got the idea of uh, importance of having their uh, content in the right place and uh, not keeping like social media as a, like a priority and top of the list or maybe you can use it as an attention this is personal experience i am sharing so that people understand that this is social media or youtube it's not permanent if you have anything you can have your own setup and you are safe this is what i wanted to convey through this discussion alhamdulillah so brother is doing which is a great example so i hope people will get it so uh, coming to your appearance and uh, fitness something which nobody talks in our community much mashallah i saw your biceps and mashallah the the workout you have done i used yeah. to be but i don't have now inshallah i have to no, get I, back I think your biceps are bigger than mine but i, I, don't I know used to <laughs> i used to bro <laughs> i used if to you're still there you just need a little work yeah alhamdulillah yeah. there is it is there i have to go two months inshallah i'll be fine but you know inshallah, laziness there you go. Uh, we'll see inshallah i'm inspired though mashallah after seeing you i should go and fix it because i will be able to do more productive work if i'm going to really say, take it seriously again what about you how did you come up is it because you went to hollywood or somewhere you got inspired or mashallah on the contrary the going oh. to hollywood actually ruined my chances to uh, to becoming an athlete because uh, i i grew up uh, brother kazi i grew up in engaging in any and every sport that you oh. can think of and i'm you know maybe zallah khair my my parents i think uh, you know the, after praising allah and thanking allah i have to thank my parents and my mom in particular who was very keen on on making sure that we were active um children and who got involved in anything that we can and it was in my nature my mom basically paved the way and then it was me so even though i'm i'm very short i'm very don't be fooled by whatever you're looking at in the camera huh. I'm, i'm i'm 167 centimeters i'm a, i'm a short fellow um which is not uh, not too bad i i think we well, are well i i feel i i feel the same way until i stand next to people around me and i'm the shortest <laughs> one all the time or is when i was a kid i was always the smallest kid in the class huh. by by far like half of the size of the other students uh, but honestly I played anything that you could imagine brother imagine at, at a young age I was playing volleyball I mean I'm too short for volleyball I yes. played basketball I played football I played tennis I played table tennis I used to sprint I used to do marathons I used to do high jump um oh, like you know uh, skiing uh so everything any sport that existed and we had access to I played and i maintained this my entire teenage uh, uh, days until i went to the states and i was really hoping i would become a, like a major basketball player um maybe i would have allahu alam i don't know but going to hollywood actually ruined all of that mm. because i got busy with with a crazy lifestyle that i lived and that completely distracted me from my uh, lifestyle of being an athlete and someone who likes sports into focusing on just trying to have fun and enjoying myself and so i had this long disconnect a long gap away from athleticism and being fit and mm. and being sporty um, and it took me years after i moved from the states to the kingdom in, in saudi arabia and then a few years into that when i started aging and then i've always maintained a slim a slim body yeah, because of sure. my nature and then finally Uh, the age said hello knocked on the door said yo i'm here and you're not going to get away with it anymore you mm. you just can't be eating what you want like because back in the day i used to eat whatever i want i would never get fat um and then i reality hit me hard and mm. basically it was i guess midlife crisis i don't know i just felt like yo i'm i'm not happy w- in the body that i'm in and i used to be very happy in the body that i'm in and uh, it was just one of those things i had this awakening some brother said yo we've been playing basketball you want to come join us it's basically allah's facilitation so yeah. slowly but surely opportunities to play sports starting coming up next thing you know i there would a gym in the building where i worked was open and so i said hey let me go to the gym and it happened to be a crossfit gym and i think that was the turning point then mm, i went full fledged yeah. uh, into sure. like okay you know what I'm 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 almost 40. I I was that was back then I was almost 40 
And I know that uh, the 40, uh, the age of 40 is supposed to be the strongest as a man. Yes. That's when the, that's when the prophets would receive revelation exactly. from Allah. Yeah. And um, I just went all out. And I'm yes. not there. I'm not there. But Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, uh, I started watching my food. And, you know, because your metabolism changes. Yes. And now I'm Most just uh, a fanatic of playing sports again. I play basketball. I play football. I go to the gym. I crossfit. I get in, involved in tournaments and events. Mashallah. And uh, I post all that stuff because I want the people to understand that when you, when you take care of yourself, besides the fact that you're actually working on your own masculinity and your own manhood to be established, you're also benefiting the ummah when the ummah needs you. Um, uh, nowadays and yes. then also and most importantly the fact that it will help you worship Allah better yeah there's a major difference between an a, a lazy out of yes. shape worshiper and a strong fit worshiper uh, whether Absolutely. it is sleeping uh, being able to wake up uh, being able to pray uh, being able to to perform the salah properly being able to do hajj or umrah properly being able to um fast in Ramadan properly, pray tarawih properly. SubhanAllah, I realized that there's so many things which were Im impacted negatively by my uh, lousy lifestyle of not maintaining mm. my health. And all of that changed upon me taking care of myself, which at the end of the day is an obligation that you have. Allah gave you this body, not for you to misuse it and, and mistreat it. You're supposed mm. to maintain it. It's an amana from Allah. And because of that, I'm keen on pushing it. Maybe I go a little bit too much. Some people say, you need to slow down, bro. You know, this and that. <laughs> and they have certain preferences, but hey, okay. I mean, this is me. And uh, once no, I see I people appreciating it and getting motivated, it's... then I'm all, I'm all for it. And I just, I, I just keep moving. I think very serious. Any, uh, because the way things are going, people are uh, having, like now I uh, have sm a simple setup and uh, people are living the whole day in the, in the room. Hey, Making videos, making money. I don't know for where, where they want to take this money, you know. But <laughs> I don't know where, what's what's with the health, man. The vitamin D is becoming like a hormone now. Uh, are yeah. we really realizing the importance of vitamin D? And I'm telling this to my sisters. Any, I mean, I mean my mother or uh, any uh, and anybody who is especially from Asia, they take it lightly when it comes to you know taking sun bath going walking on the you know sea you know seasides so these things are not happening we are not no more like a human now it's uh, robotic yeah, we, need to, we need to revive it that's that's yes. what we're here for we need to revive we should, spirituality we should talk we more need about to revive it physicality we need to revive everything everything we we need to work on that's it's that's overall, what we need for. overall role role thing since uh, we are talking about again those setup guys now there is kind of you know uh, groups within groups and uh, groups develop differences also and then they go after each other and doesn't uh, it's it's like they hurt uh, larger dava objective you know when they have such, such kind of groups seeing this internal you know fights sometimes uh, I tell also like if I am doing something like that, uh, I feel like w am I signing up for something uh, which is useless, especially when I came up with the YouTube and podcast, which I planned five years back and and he started like this Ramadan, you know, mm. because every time I was thinking, is it very important? I do have uh, like serious reason to come up and share on this because now I feel like, OK, now uh, there is a time. This is the right time where everybody is available online also. I can connect, network, build that muscle mind. So seeing these things, uh, that's for me. Uh, I, I, you, uh, did you ever felt like any, uh, that's for me, or I did not uh, sign up for this, and I'm not here to create any like division mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, in within this online tribe? Ever Did you ever felt like that, Annie? No, I'm too mean and too blunt <laughs> and too too straightforward to be so courteous and thoughtful about all these things. Like I told you, I'm, um, I'm, I'm I don't read really well and uh, and uh, think too much. That's I'm, that's you know, something. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I just, I just just do just action and you know thought just action. Get, all. get out and do something about it. So yeah, it, yeah. Just yeah, exactly. I don't don't overthink. Overthinking is counterproductive. Sometimes the best thing to do is. I mean, I'm not saying don't think. I'm not promoting uh, stupidity <laughs> by any means. I'm just saying don't overthink. 
Yes. Um, you get an opportunity, you seek Allah's guidance, uh, you do istikhara if you can. Allah facilitates, just keep moving. Yes. Just go right on and, and don't think back and don't sit if I had done this. You know, that's what Prophet taught. That don't say if, uh, law, because law opens the door of shaitan. Once mm. you say, law, had I only done this, if I had only done this, yeah. if I had started earlier, khalas, khalas, khalas. It's archived, it's archived, it's done. You are the son mm. of now. You are the son of this moment. So when you have this moment in, in front of you, capitalize and keep The problem moving. is, the, the worry, the biggest worry is the objective of, uh, you know, uh, the dawah that hurts especially in the larger level like now within groups now we are so busy within the groups now that uh, we are forgetting that there are bigger things we can do it right yeah that's uh, that's something which makes me worry also right even if if i see all the brothers are busy uh, any and showing the differences of each other working on the next next video to refute we are busy within ourselves what about people who are waiting for us to you know give the to them well i mean it, it look it's the balance striking the balance uh, brother kazi in this aspect is a very big challenge it's a hurdle mm. it's an obstacle yes. because you have an obligation towards a segment of people that have no knowledge of Islam, no awareness of Islam. You need to cater for those people. You need to provide to them. You need to educate them. You need to give them guidance uh, by the will of Allah. And then you also have a segment of people that are truly thirsty um, to learn what will help them save themselves from being clutched by uh, denominations and sectarianism and groups that are promoting themselves and inviting them to join them. And uh, that, that challenge has to be basically overcome by the caller to Islam according to his circumstances, according to his qualifications, according to his abilities. There are a number of factors that have to be taken into consideration, but I don't think we should focus on either or. Um, you have to do refutations. I am for refutations uh, because if you don't, if you don't, you're also deceiving the Muslims. Right. Um, like anything else in this world. If I know that this bakery down the street has cockroaches, if I went to that bakery and I saw mice and cockroaches and rats in the back, and then I know the whole neighborhood buys bread from this person and I don't tell them that people get poisoned and die. I am responsible from a, on a human level. I am responsible for deceiving my neighbors by not informing them of something that I'm clearly aware of. And, and people will come and say, why did you not speak? Why did you not tell us? And then you will have absolutely no excuses like a fireman, a firefighter <laughs> who sees a building on fire. He's standing in front of the truck. He has a water hose and then he doesn't do anything. He's just watching the place burn down. No right. one is going to cut him any slack. Everybody's going to blame the firefighter for just standing there uh, carelessly, not making any effort, not trying to save the people. If this right. is the case with matters of phys physical, the physical human existence, then what about the, the spiritual? Exactly. What right. about the spiritual maintenance of humans, which is far more important and far more superior? So if I know that there are other people, other denominations, other sects, other groups, other individuals that are out there poisoning and harming the Muslims, and I'm just sitting there, oh, well, you know, let me mind my business because I don't want to be a troublemaker and I don't want to be start a fuss and I don't want to be a fitna propagator, then yeah, okay. And then what? And then you're going to let everybody else go astray until you reach the point of no return? No. Okay. If let's say you're using your logic, Let's say this is a, a purely subjective matter, meaning this mm. is how you feel. Mm. Okay, is this how the Sahaba and the early righteous predecessors conducted themselves? Absolutely not. So when we go to the fundamentals we began this podcast with, which is that we follow Islam as understood by the companions, then we will have to look at them. How did they deal with the person who tried to create a new sect? How yeah. did they deal with Dhul Khawaisira? who came and opposed the Prophet ﷺ. What did Umar want to do with him? Umar wanted to chop off his head. Mm. Prophet ﷺ told him, leave him. 
And the Prophet Sallam warned against the denomination. He said, This will be the there will come people from him who will read the Quran and will not go past their collarbones until the end of the hadith. How did Ibn Umar deal with people that rejected Qadr? He said, Tell them that I have nothing to do with them and they have nothing to do with me until they believe in the Qadr of Allah. Khairihi wa sharri. Um, and we have many examples where the Sahaba were outspoken and they warned and they spoke against any type of deviation which will affect the Muslim masses. So even if you subjectively prefer to be low-key and keep to yourself and not speak about others, you're actually not following the way of the righteous predecessors who did the very opposite right. thing. And so we're back to square one. You're just mm. living another version of Islam that is agreeable to you, that is pleasing to you. And obviously it is safer. It is definitely safer, more appealing. Everybody claps for you. Hey, what a wonderful guy. Oh, Mr. Nice Guy. Look, everybody loves him. He doesn't say anything bad about anyone. And yeah. all he says all day is take the good and leave the bad. Take the good and leave the bad. <laughs> yeah, Sheikh. Uh, yes, you will gain the, the acceptance of the people. But will you gain the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when his yeah. religion, his revelation, his way of life, the way he revealed is being compromised, is being sidelined, is being altered and changed in order to appease the people? Mm. We don't think so. And mm. according to the Quran and the Sunnah, you're definitely on the wrong track. That's so, why I was asking you about the framework, because uh, one of the one of the steps, maybe I would say, like, do you give the warning, uh, you know, before you go for the refutation, or uh, do you uh, ask for the dialogue? Is it possible for us to have a dialogue before going public about it? Well, honestly, brother, I would always prefer. If I'm given the opportunity, if it's feasible, meaning mm. if I'm able to access that person and I know that they will accept advice, uh, then I would definitely prefer to do so before I go public. But one thing I need to highlight is that that is not always an option for two reasons. A, that person is just not accessible to you. Right. B, that person does not take you seriously to begin with. You see, mm. for a person to accept advice, they need to... They accept advice usually from someone that they believe is superior to them, someone that is senior to them. And so when they, and my appearance, mashallah, doesn't help me in this regard. When they, they say this schoolboy or this kid is, is trying to advise, they're going to be like, what? Like, who is this guy? Um, so it's not always an option to reach out, even though yeah. I would prefer that. But mm. let's say that, is that actually an obligation? No, it is not. It is not an obligation. It is definitely a better option if feasible. But even if it's not, if the person is publicly putting out misinformation, then you can publicly correct that misinformation. Mm. Well, and and it's, it's all now on a public platform. So it mm. is eye for eye, tooth for tooth, ear for ear type of yes. thing. You see what it's I'm saying? You're thing. doing this publicly. You're not consulting with us before you put it out. And we don't have to consult with you. When you mm. when we put it out, but you know that sometimes can be a, if it creates a lot of confusion among the people, and we're able to resolve it behind closed doors. That is preferred, but usually that happens with people that are generally good, like they have the good foundation, and they've they're confused. They're confused in some area, or mm. they or they went astray in some aspect. It, it is possible, but when someone uh, is 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 operating from a completely different paradigm than yours right like your foundations and their foundations don't do not even agree it is almost impossible from experience to be able to convert that person to your side with those closed uh, private conversations it's almost impossible because that person already has a presence he's already had a splash as they say he's had an impact and and you don't see things eye to eye so people that are advisable and we have access to them, yes, I would prefer that we do so. This is the framework. We try to reach out, say, yo, akhi, this is not right. This is what you said. And they're like, oh, zakallah khair. You know, you know those people. And there are people that, uh, we're not going to say it's a hopeless case. It's just very difficult to be able to communicate with them or convince them to change their views because they're on the other side of the spectrum. And then those you just have to blast uh, publicly, just like they're putting out their misguidance publicly, and that's part of the deed of Islam. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not sad about it. 
I don't regret it because it's part of the religion that I, I practice. My it's religion thing, teaches yeah. me to enjoy what it's, is good and forbid what is evil. It's like uh, you ha have uh, people with different different roles in uh, you know uh, Islam in a global level also, because you doing something which will contribute somehow in uh, you know the global vision. Uh, somebody is doing something else which will also contribute. Somebody is doing charity, it will contribute. Everyone yeah. has their own roles, Yani. So yeah, everyone and, cannot and give. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes this is thing. your role. Like yes. among among the brothers that I know personally, the the good students of knowledge, uh, whenever there's an issue of this nature, uh, they they usually, I know they're able to address the matter, uh, but when I address the matter, they they tell me, Zakallah khair, you've you've taken this burden of our back. I mean, we, yes. we 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 needed someone to speak about it because they know that they cannot keep silent. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe some have more time than others. Some are are may, maybe more. I don't know. They can articulate it better. Uh, some do more yes. research. It depends. It depends. But there are certain individuals that are disqualified. They they yes. have the skill to actually refute um, in in a manner that is acceptable, that is understandable right. to the audience. And subhanallah, that becomes you know your point of strength, and then becomes your responsibility uh, yeah. accordingly. And you have to act upon it. There's, there's no shying away from that. Yes. Alhamdulillah. I have seen so many of the brothers, mashallah. We have in Bahrain also. Yani. Maybe I have to connect someday. Both of you. Uh, if you know, brother Farid is my one of the closest friends. You can say he is in Bahrain. And mashallah, he is doing his work. Yani. <laughs> uh, Farid response, if you get a chance to see the YouTube channel. Amazing. Recently, he came up and he's bashing Come all Come on, those man. You really, Maybe. you really think, you really think I don't know Farid responds? Really? You know him? Of course. <laughs> of course, I you guys are on YouTube, man. <laughs> yeah, akhi, look, when I'm, 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 a, I'm a man of refutation. Yes, you better believe you should be I'm going to be familiar you. with other people of refutation. Ah, um, so, so you guys know each other. I, I know, I know his, I know he's there. I, I think we've, um, I think he left a comment on my channel once. Really? And that has been like the only communication we have and i think we have a common uh, we have a bunch of common friends i haven't been in touch with him i would like to be in touch with him actually it's someone yes. that i really uh, uh, i appreciate i like his sense of humor i like his yeah, approach yeah, uh, i see some similarities actually you know uh, yes. between me and him yes. uh, with him being the better one obviously well, some uh, of the fans uh, on his interview when i recently made have requested like can you get these two brothers together just to have conversation yeah you know yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's someone request. that i think i can connect with yes. uh well mashallah and yeah I'm, I'm familiar with farid i watch his videos i i know what's up i'm plugged in on him hey mashallah that's something uh, great news for me and i have to share this immediately i did not know <laughs> yeah well <laughs> now you know <laughs> yes no, no, I, I, I enjoy watching the stuff, bro. I mean, I, oh, try, really? I have to be up to date. I have to know what's going on in the scene. Part he, of he used to work on uh, any uh, Shia-related work and uh, the Sunnah discourse. He has worked a lot on that. Almost like 10 years, he was into that. And uh, in fact, he was like completely hidden. Yani. He did not come out for these things because because of the culture here, because of the situation here, he did not openly come out for that. But Alhamdulillah, finally he's out, he's doing it. I'm really glad and I'm really happy yeah. for what he's doing. We should we should have some people and he taking care of this area also. And, we, yeah, and, he, oh, and if people should be humble also to accept. If you, if you really feel it bad, it hurts you, come, come together. Let's see if we can come into, you know, common terms and have a proper dialogue. If that is possible, why not, Yanni? Yeah, so, look, I've been, I've been given the example of restaurants the whole day. We might, we might as yes. well continue on that. Just look at the Muslim du'at as a, an owner of a restaurant. Mm. And a restaurant, to operate successfully, you need to have uh, uh, cooks, uh, you need to have a, a chef, you need to have a, a manager, you need to have a waiter, you need to have a busboy. Um, yeah, everybody a has a work. role to play. And yes. what you know, sometimes you could swap roles, and sometimes no one is going to be like the butcher. Like the only person who's going to be able to chop that meat is the butcher, and those are the people of refutation. Those are Ahmed Didat, and and those of us who follow that path of of refuting outwardly and out, you know, straight in your face, uh, any type of deviance, whether an individual or an ideology. We speak about it, we address it, we we take it down. That is the butcher. And if you don't have a successful chef or a butcher in your restaurant, 
your restaurant business will go down and you can't put the waiter there. The waiter's there is to speak with the people and be nice and take the order and make them feel welcome. Everybody in Dawah has a role to play. Yes. And once you have a designated role, then you need to try to become professional at it. You need to try to uh, cool. sharpen your skills. You can't just be a, a jack of all trades and try to be all over them. You could, but it's always better to focus on one area that you know is your strength and you know that you can manage it and then invest into that. Uh, the people appreciating, if you, if you ask, the, the, for example, the customers, who, who's the person you like the most? They're going to say, man, we like the waiter or we like the manager. Why? They don't care about the butcher in the kitchen. But in reality, the butcher is the one who's letting them eat. If he wasn't there, they wouldn't even be eating anything. The chef is the most important person, for example, in that restaurant. But the customers prefer the waiter and they prefer the manager because those are the ones that they interact with. So Next when you me. refute people, you may not be the most liked person. But for those who understand, you may be the most appreciated person because you're right. the one who's telling it to them as it is. Look, I'm not going to play games with you. I'm not going to show you a quote. Bam. That's what's up. You like it. Ahlan wa sahlan. You don't like it. Go to the next restaurant. It's okay. They serve food as well. Yeah. Clear. <laughs> yeah. MashaAllah. So what a great discussion. Alhamdulillah. So before uh, any, uh, we conclude completely, we have uh, rapid uh, fire questions. It's like a few questions I will ask, which is like usually we have these conversations, but few questions when we ask, it's like you have to be very, you know, quick, spontaneous. I know you, I know you are one of them who is very spontaneous with humorous answers, mashallah. So uh, in this rapid session, it's like you have either one or five words to say. You know, not more okay. than that. I like that. I've never done that before. One or you five know, words. Let's do this. Yes. And um, sometimes you have to just complete the words. And most, okay. I think today I will have, which is very easy. But I, I give you one word, you just complete it with your answer. So uh, if uh, that is the case, let's start. It's it's going <laughs> to be <laughs> fun, yeah, inshallah. This, this is funny. This is funny. Yes, it's it's, it's, it's a Allah. funny way to close my podcast interview. It's, a, so, it's an intelligent way. Tfadda. Yes. What do you, uh, when I say family, what comes to your mind? Um, appreciation. I wanted to ask a lot about your family because you have a team inside with you taking care of anything work. Mashallah, I see a lot of graphic works is going on. I recently even saw uh, the music thing. <laughs> Not music, of course, it's the sound effects, right? Oh yeah, the sound interesting effects. sound yeah, well, effects. Say, Every no, no, what music? <laughs> keyboards. <laughs> when you did this yeah. like this, <laughs> people hey, like the keyboard thing yeah. also, mashallah. Yeah, appreciation. Families appreciation because mashallah, they we the one way to paradise is managed uh, as a family project. Everybody's involved uh, in some way. The baby mashallah. just comes and distracts us, which is his role in the in the in that project as well. <laughs> so core belief, because only you can say. Core belief? Yeah, when I say core belief. La ilaha illallah. Self help in uh, this self help industry. Uh, do your own project. Do it on your own project. Uh, missing childhood moment. Missing childhood moment. Um, when my mother went away for a long time to get a surgery. And when I finally saw her in the hospital, I was supposed to run to my mother, but I was so hurt that I ran away. And I still feel bad until now. Yes, I ran away, not like ran away from home. <laughs> but, you know, it, I, was, I was so hurt that mm. she was gone. I didn't understand what was going on. And instead of running towards her, I, I just like was like too upset to like, I don't want to, I don't want to, oh. I, I don't know. I had a, I threw a fit kind of thing. I still feel bad. Like, why did I do that? That was dumb. Future of Middle East. Future of Middle East, our Middle East. Future of the Middle East, inshallah, the coming of the Mahdi. Hey, mashallah. I, I got to think positively, bro, because I don't, don't want to think about the other things <laughs> that happen first. So uh, you can say five scholars' name. Five scholars? Oh, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyyah. And when it comes to politics, what's, what comes to your mind? Stay away from politics. That's Seriously. what Sheikh Albani said. 
It's really? part of being a politician, staying away from politics. It's 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 a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope, and it's a trick. It's very tricky. Mm. Uh, you know, hey, you can you can you can progress, and you can get chopped. Slow your roll. So, getting old. Um, exciting. Exciting. Wow. That's and, positive. And challenging. Challenge yourself to stay young, even in spite of getting old. Right. Should be should be able to play football when grandsons grand grandsons are with you, Annie. Well, my my uncle currently does that. My uncle, I think, he's hit the sixties, and he plays football regularly. He plays tennis regularly. You see him, you will you will say, no way on earth this man is in his late fifties or early sixties. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Um. So yeah, yeah. I I try I try to Something follow to that. Follow, uh, yeah legend and legacy oh. of my uncle and and yeah hopefully be in the left we remain alive and healthy will be you know Mashallah. hey doing it at a young, older age younger body yes what was your favorite book growing up um any english book i i like i love the english language as a as a child and um mm -hmm. i think it was the the book uh the story rumple rumple still skin is that what it was called Rumpel still and some some crazy book uh, of of uh, some character. I think it was called Rumpel Rumpel Stills. I can't even remember the word now. Really, uh, that's such a fail. But I'll look it up, and you can look it up. I think Google will help. Rumpel you. Rumpel, inshallah. So, so what was it? Anyways, three things you uh, are grateful for. Um, Islam, uh, the way of the Salaf, and my family. Happiness. Happiness? Gym. Really? Okay. <laughs> Bro, the moment I hit the gym, it's happiness from the beginning until the end. I leave like, oh, before I enter, I'm like, oh, after I leave, like, oh. This, awesome. is, this is such happy moments, mashallah. Oh, okay. I, I was asking credentials or experience. I said experience or maybe the, yeah, thing, just, the internet cut I off. Just, experience, yeah. I, I answered you immediately with my okay, eyes okay. closed. Experience, Perfect. 100%. Forget about credentials if you yes. don't have experience. Quality of life or quality or quantity of life? Quality of life. So lastly, this interview. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Look, this, I, I don't know, bro. I don't know how long we've been in touch with each other before this happened. Yes. And I don't know how many podcasts I've done. And I'm not trying to take away from the other brothers. But this was unique and different. And I, I liked yes. it in so many different ways. I, I was worried Masha. I'm going to underperform. And I'm tired, you know, it's a long day. I just came from the gym earlier. You are fully energetic. Allah, bro, you, you, uh, you made it very entertaining. And those rapid fire questions are gold. I, it's like <laughs> really? my personality yearns for, for stuff like that. So you, you hit Allah it right Allah on Allah the, Allah. you hit the nail on the head. Alhamdulillah. Which Laka is Allah good. Khair. Such a great uh, discussion with you. So this right. is it, guys. Thank you so much uh, for watching, and uh, make sure you're going to follow the one, uh, the the one way to paradise and uh, the righteous rich podcast. Whatever the links which is required, which we wanted to discuss, we could not discuss. Of course, there are so many things we could, but uh, you we can will watch have other in videos. The future, yes, maybe in future I'm gonna get. This uh, Abu brother uh, Abu Musab and brother Farid also. This is something in I have in my mind. Inshallah, this is gonna be blast. Inshallah, so stay tuned. Thank you so much.